Hello, in this video I'll be discussing this amazing technique for studying RNA binding proteins and the RNAs that they interact with. It's known as Parklip and it has this longer name. So Parklip is similar to an older technique known as CLIP. In this diagram we are inside the cell. Here are some mRNAs floating around and here are some proteins which are bound to them. In CLIP you use a harsh UV treatment to irradiate the cell. Any proteins bound to RNAs will get cross-linked. You add your antibody to the protein of interest, pull it down, add nucleases to chop back the RNA, add proteases to remove the protein, and then you go on to library preparation and sequencing. Parklip is different in that the researcher adds this special nucleotide at a low concentration to the cell, which gets randomly incorporated into every single RNA in the cell, including mRNAs, microRNAs, small RNAs, um, and proteins, again, by, that are bound to the mRNA at these special locations where the nucleotide is. When gentle UV is used, only the proteins bound at these special locations get cross-linked, which is a, a cleaner process than what we had before. And then again, you have your antibody to your protein of interest. You do the same thing. But a special thing happens during the library preparation and sequencing. Reverse transcriptase incorporates the wrong nucleotide at cross-linked regions at these special nucleotides. So every special nucleotide that got cross-linked, and the cross-link should only be at these nucleotides, cause reverse transcriptase to incorporate the wrong nucleotide. So here's a image that I made with Pymol of Argonaut, which is the protein that microRNAs use to function. And it has Argonaut with the domains colored, and then it has the microRNA in red and the target RNA in blue, which is, um, which most people would consider an mRNA, but it could be any Theoretical, it could be a long non-coming RNA, it could be another microRNA. I'll just call it a target RNA for now. Um, so one thing that you'll notice is the first seven to eight bases of the microRNA are pointed away from the protein, ready to um, bind to the bases of the target RNA. Since the bases are pointing away from the argonaut, they, they can't be cross-linked when the UV is shined on the cells. And, and researchers have noticed this when they look to see where the mutations are in parklip libraries for, for microRNAs, they are predominantly at these two locations. Similarly, the, the mRNA or target RNA has a preferred location for its crosslink, and people people know this. And they've used this information to make what it, what is known what are known as crosslink centered regions. Basically, they take all the reads that map to the mRNA, they look for the mutation, which is a TC in this case. And the, the position with the most TC mutations is, is made the center of the cluster. And then they go 20 bases in both directions. And then they call this a cross-link centered region. So this is a huge improvement over something such as target scan. If you, if you just take a 6-7 nucleotide sequence and search it against every RNA in the human genome, you'll get thousands of potential hits. But this narrows down the region where microRNAs are targeting to this 40 base pair region. And as we'll see, it actually narrows it down even, even further. So how, how, do, how, how does this happen? If we go back to our image, we'll see that we have the center right here and then we have the seed over here of the microRNA. The seed is what microRNA is used to, to bind to the target RNA. But the CCR is five prime to three prime in this diagram. 
And the microRNA in this diagram is 5 prime, 3 prime, which is making the target RNA 3 prime to 5 prime. So this image needs to be flipped to have the orientation correct for the CCR and the target RNA. Once we do that, we see that the seed should be present right here. So we've, we've gone from having no idea where the microRNA might bind to the RNA to this very small region, um, thus increasing our specif specificity of microRNA targets. Okay, so my first year in, in grad school, I wanted to, I saw this data set, this half near at all data set, and I had no idea what a FASTQ file was or where to download RNA data, but I figured it out and I wrote a bunch of Python scripts, made some regular expressions, and I found uh, the most abundant microRNAs. And then I downloaded the 17,000 CCRs from Hafner et al. And I tested different seed regions of these microRNAs and scanned the CCRs. You would need the reverse complement of the, of the seed. And I came up with this image. And it's pretty amazing. So the seed regions, these are known as the canonical regions. Through years of experimentation and looking at evolutionarily conserved regions of, of mRNAs, um, people have established before Parkcliffe came around that these are the seeds of microRNAs. But it's just nice to see that in a large data set with thousands of comparisons that we get what we've hypothesized or, or I guess known for a while. It's just nice to see that the bioinformatics and years of experiments perfectly correlate. What I then did is, is I, I knew that small RNAs besides microRNAs were present in this data set. And I took some, some tRNA fragments and I did the same thing that I did with the microRNAs. And you see the exact same thing indicating that tRNA fragments are also pulling down these, these RNAs, just like microRNAs. And you can actually perform this analysis with any small RNA that you want. So there's, there's more small RNAs out there. And if you are curious if your novel small RNA that you discovered may be acting like a microRNA, you can use this paradigm for investigating um, this possibility. If you want to know more about this analysis, you can check out this publication which I co-wrote uh, my first year in grad school. Okay, thanks.